After a disappointing game five, the Dallas Stars look to close out Colorado tonight in Denver and clinch a spot in the Western Conference Final for the second straight season. It's a game six preview on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy Stars fans and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. The Dallas Stars look to close out the Colorado Avalanche once and for all tonight. In Denver, in game six, another late one, nine o'clock puck drop on TNT. So get your caffeine ready. And can the Dallas Stars follow the suit of the Eastern Conference as they finally get a team into their conference final? And the Stars have a chance to be the first team in the Western Conference to clinch their spot. But we all know the Avalanche will not go away easily if it was anything we could take out of game number five. We'll talk about special teams and how impactful that has been in the series so far, and then we'll get into some keys for game six tonight. Dallas has been fantastic on the road so far in the postseason. They're four in one, plenty of storylines entering this one, including the containment of McKinnon and McCarr because they had their fingerprints all over a game five victory. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms uh, apply. So good news on Tyler Sagan coming out of a travel day yesterday with Pete DeBoer and the Dallas Stars. Pete DeBoer went on to say that Tyler Sagan is okay and he should be good to go tonight, which is a great sign. He took a, a hit or a cross check late in game five and he, he left the bench and went down the tunnel and looked very upset, which was a cause for concern, certainly especially with the Stars already without Rope Hints. He, he seems to still be day-to-day. I don't know if we're going to see him, even if this series extends to seven games. So no official update on Rope Hints uh, up to this point. I'm really curious to see what Dallas wants to do with some of their black aces, including Maverick Bort, including Leon Bischel, who could have the opportunity to step in and play. I don't know if I'm quite there yet. Dallas has played really, really well in this series. Do not overreact to one loss on home ice. Colorado played very, very well. They got some help from their special teams. And if Dallas can lock it down like they have for the majority of this season, I don't think they need to change a whole lot. And the line combinations for Dallas in game five were different, but they proved they could score. Uh, Johnston playing up top with uh, Stan Coven and Ben once again, you reunite that trio. That looked really, really solid. Love the new look line of Duchesne, Pavelski, and Robertson, actually. Not something uh, I thought uh, I would really uh really be praising a whole lot just with the way Pavelski had been playing throughout the postseason but they were even able to to chip in some offense uh I thought the offensive trios looked really really solid and I don't know if Pete DeBoer can necessarily go wrong even if Ty Landry has to step in tonight if Sagan isn't able to go the Stars have enough depth to put something together that should allow them to get enough offense in order to win this game tonight. You have the Wyatt Johnstons, you have Robertson still, and don't forget about the talent on the back end with Miro and the wonderful offensive series he is having. Eight points so far in the first five games, and Thomas Harley could still even pitch in uh, a bit offensively as well. Not totally concerned with Dallas in their forward groups. Whoever they throw together, it just feels like they're able to conjure up something. That fourth line has been buzzing, and for large stretches of game five, they were really, really good. Just need to find a way to extend their lead here tonight. Try to push Colorado to the brink. Don't allow them to hang around and be within arm's distance because that's when they're dangerous. 
that's when they're still confident after erasing a bunch of leads already in this series, or at least getting close to erasing more than one, uh, they are uh, they they are going to feel in it no matter what. I am curious to see how McKinnon and McCarr hold up again here tonight after playing above twenty three minutes uh, in Game Five. I assume they're going to get used more than twenty. Uh, here again tonight, I can guarantee you McCarr is going to play over 24 <laughs> and I can almost guarantee you McKinnon will probably play around 22. How much gas is left in McKinnon in McCarr? Because they look exhausted at some points in game five. And I thought a lot of bounces went their way. A lot of things went the avalanche way in game five. Are they able to, to pull it out of themselves once again here tonight. And also, Dallas needs to tidy up defensively once again. I mentioned this after game five, but it felt like Dallas got out of their game a bit and it sort of started to meander in a style that really benefited Colorado. A lot more hectic, a lot more up and down, on man rushes, and being able to create some offense off the rush. I thought the Avs did a better job of back-checking and marking stars than they did previously. Dallas needs to get back to that, stay disciplined, and keep out of the box, number one. And we'll jump into special teams and how impactful it has been in this series so far. But Dallas has to stay out of the box tonight. Colorado is just way too good on special teams. That also brings up Jake Ottinger. And what are we going to get from Mr. Otter? He had a bit of a stinker here in game five. And you all know me. I, I'm a big believer in Jake, probably even when I shouldn't be. Uh, there was times throughout the season where uh, I, I was a bit on edge and uneasy uh, about his play because at some point it needed to get better and for a while there, it felt like it wasn't getting better. But he has been phenomenal in the postseason. I don't think you can really argue that. He's been really, really solid. Has he been better than Shesterkin? Probably not. And New York, the way they're just rolling through everybody. But he has been really, really solid this season. And when Dallas needs him, he usually shows up big time. Following a loss, we know that gets um, uh, a lot of attention. He's 11-4. and four following a loss in the postseason in his career. They need him to be really, really strong. He's been so good on the road. I expect him to be sharp again tonight. The stars in general have been fantastic away from the American Airlines Center this season. We talk about that at nauseum, but they're the best home team or the best road team, I should say, in the National Hockey League. Colorado, on the other hand, was the best home team and they laid a couple of eggs on home ice. So I expect a huge push from Colorado, sort of what we saw in game three. They obviously left a lot to be, des uh, left to left a lot to be desired after losing game three and four, you know, they're going to have some pride. They don't want to lose it on home ice and Dallas is going to have their hands full. Once again, it is the hardest game to win the series clincher and Colorado isn't necessarily at their best maybe not playing their best but you know Jared Bednar you know the pedigree of everyone up and down that lineup is not going to go away easily but I still feel Dallas is the better team they just have to buckle down for one more and get past Colorado oh, excuse me <laughs> get past Colorado tonight. Got a frog stuck in my throat. And then you can move on. Clinch a spot in the Western Conference Final for the second straight season. Uh, Dallas is, is getting con contributions from everywhere. Uh, I mean, they, they really are. If you look at the point totals, especially the, the start difference from the Vegas series to now, it's a lot better. I mean, they're almost double their uh, amount of goals per game in this series, and they've cut in half the amount of goals that they've allowed. Um, that's just how stingy, uh, that's just how stingy Vegas was too. But Dallas has kept a very, very good offense at bay so far. But they allowed them to to pop off for five, and that that'll sort of be the difference in this one. I'm sure special teams will will play a factor, but how many chances? 
are you going to allow to the big three uh, of Colorado, McKinnon, Ranton, and and McCarr? Because they got pretty much whatever they wanted in game five. If you're able to take away them, I like your chances tonight in Denver. They're the key to everything, especially without Nashushkin. They got some great games from Lekkonen and Parise, by the way. Um, don't want to overshadow their performances as as well. Feels like a disservice me talking about the big three all um, all series long. But look, the two wins they have, those guys have popped off. Hasn't really been anybody else. <laughs> um, what whether you like it or not, that 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 is kind of the uh, kind of the recipe f- for them. Um, so if you keep them off the score sheet, good things will happen. Speaking of that, let, let's jump into special teams a bit more and take a, a bit of a, a deep dive and how really, really impactful it has been. Plus, the home and road splits are very, very drastic for the Dallas Stars, especially on the penalty kill. I'll tell you more in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. What are you waiting for, Stars fans? Get in on the action This postseason, the Mavericks look to close out their second round series. Let's have the Stars and Mavericks clinch their spot in the Western Conference Final. Why not sprinkle a little money on the boys? $150 in bonus bets for new customers. As I mentioned, sprinkle some money on a Con Smythe trophy for Wyatt Johnston or even Miro Haskinen at this point with the way he's playing. The Stars and Mavericks, it is a great time to be a sports fan and DFW. So go ahead and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get in on the action. Make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So power plays and penalty kills have certainly have impacted the outcomes in the first five games of this series between the stars and avalanche who has ever won the special teams battle so far in each game has come out on top and even more drastically are the numbers for the stars on the road so far in this series. If you take a look at their penalty kill uh, in the two games in Colorado, they are five for five. They, they've they been really brilliant, and I, I've talked about it a lot on how they're really forcing Colorado into the middle of the ice without support, where they have bodies, they have support, they have help, and they can knock the puck off McKinnon or McCarr, who's ever driving the power play, and then you can get it down the ice and reset, get back to defensive posture. At home, on the other hand, they've allowed McCarr to have way too much space, and they've allowed Colorado to have a lot of space where they can make plays, they can can get clean passes off and, and get more looks uh, that they would like. Uh, they're four for eight at home on the PK, so they're only 50%. Um, and you also see uh, Colorado was two for three the other night on the power play. In game five, Stars were one for four, and that that tilt the scales there. Stars have had a couple of shorthanded goals that led to to uh, to led to um, some wins in game two and uh, in game four. So, uh, more importantly, Dallas just needs to stay out of the box. They have to be really, really disciplined tonight. Colorado wants to get Dallas out of their game, and you saw it in game five, where Ranton and comes around the net, cross checks Tanev, and then Tanev gives him a blow back, and then boom, he ends up in the box. Should have been four. They were fortunate. They only gave Tanev a, a minor in that one. And either way, Colorado capitalized, and it just it got Avalanche back into the hockey game, and it got back the, uh, back to back 
uh, back to their game. You've seen it multiple times. You saw it at the tail end of game four. Colorado's trying to persuade Dallas into some extracurriculars, into some fistfights, into some scrums in order to, to at least just try to inject some energy on their side, especially when things are not going their way. Dallas has to stay out of that, stay in their lane, and continue to play hockey. And I thought they did a, a, a bang-up job at that in games three and four. They got out of that a bit in game five. Do not let the emotions boil over here tonight where you find yourself in a revolving door at the penalty box because more than likely it's 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 going to be lights out for you if if Colorado gets three power plays. They are very, very dangerous. Even though the Stars did an excellent job on the road, um, you're you're asking for it is what I'm trying to get to. You're really asking for it when when you give Colorado multiple power plays uh, a night. And and you may take some calls here and there and look, the, the stripes are not always going to be perfect, but that's just the nature of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The game moves fast. So do the referees. They're not going to see everything. They're going to get retaliations, and you, you just have to live with that. A few non-calls, but if uh, you move your feet, you play hard, uh, hopefully you uh, you get on the right side of some of those calls and uh, you can close it out tonight. But it's two power plays that have been fantastic throughout the postseason. They're both top five. Dallas is clipping at 30%. Colorado's at, at 34 Um, and, and if you look at Dallas, they're 72% on the penalty kill uh, this postseason. They've been really, really good on the road. I don't know if they gave up a power play goal against Vegas either. If, if I recall correctly, they may be perfect so far away from the AAC. Um, I, I really should confirm that. Um, I, I, I want to say, I don't think they gave up a power play goal uh, against Vegas either on the road. So they, they have been really, really stout defensively, especially on the PK. Their power play has been pretty good both ways. Um, loved what we saw out of them in game five. I thought Dallas is getting a lot more movement up top. I love when Miro and Robo are very, very fluid. They're moving around. That opens up shooting lanes for themselves and others. That unit of Miro, Robertson, Johnston, Ben, uh, and Pavelski, they didn't score on that first power play they had in the first period, but boy, did they have some good looks. They were moving around. They were creating chances and generating some offense. Uh, Would love to see more of that. Uh, what are we going to get from Georgiev? That that's a, another one. He he's been a bit spotty throughout the series. There's there's nights where he looks extremely good, and, and then there's some nights he would probably like to to have a few back. But he he's played really well at key stretches of hockey games. I would say I feel like he makes some big saves at at, at times when Colorado may be on their heels, and it keeps him in the game. Fortunately for Dallas so far in the series, it really hasn't, it hasn't really come to an ugly head where Georgiev steals a game by any stretch uh, of, of the imagination so far. I thought, I thought Dallas has done a great job of just working through some of those problems. Even if Georgiev is hot, they just continue to get pucks to the net and uh, they scored a couple of, of greasy goals so far um, in this series. Georgiev is just 3.09 goals against average, 890 save percentage in his 10 games throughout the postseason. So he hasn't been um he hasn't been lights out uh by any means either. So uh, that is a big advantage for Dallas, you would think. I just feel like you need a great performance from Jake. You get enough offense tonight and, and you can close this game out in six and then you're in the Western Conference final and you await your opponents between Vancouver and Edmonton tonight. Feeling really, really good about this one. Uh, I really am. I, I, I think there is a, a general panic throughout some of stars fandom, at least on Twitter, but there's always a panic on Twitter. I really shouldn't go, uh, and, and scroll through Twitter after losses. Everybody, um, everybody thinks that the world is crashing down. I'm here to say everything's going to be all right. Dallas is going to be okay. 
I think they're deeper. I just think they're a better team. And they have an excellent chance here to close it out tonight. They're a good hockey club. They're the best team in the Western Conference in the regular season. They were that team for a reason. And even with injuries to, to Rope Hints and others, uh, I know Hints is a big loss, but Dallas can do this without him. I don't know about the rest of the way, but we can cross that road at another time. Stars need to get through uh, the avalanche here tonight, um, and then we could talk about the lasting effects of Rope Hints. All righty, game six tonight between the Stars and Avs. Another late one. Boston and Florida is in action tonight as well. Can Florida finally close out Boston? Uh, we have a, a lot of teams that have trailed uh, by, by large margins in this postseason, and they've been able to force it to a game six. Bruins are at home. The Avs are at home. So uh, a couple of uh, elimination games tonight that could end in handshakes, and hopefully for the star's sake, it is them at Ball Arena. Let's get into some keys for tonight in game six, and we'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Hey, the Mavericks are in town taking on Oklahoma City tonight in their game six. You want to go to the game? Use game time and get $20 off your first purchase. It takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. And as I just mentioned, you get the best deals and lowest price even up to tip off. You see the view from your seat before you buy, so you're not worried about obstructions or any sort of poles or glass in your way, even though the AAC doesn't really have terrible seats, to be completely honest. They have some pretty good spots. There are some ones with, the, there are some views that maybe have some obstructions, but uh, nothing that is uh, too obscene, in, in my opinion. So download the Game Time app. It takes 30 seconds. It's on Google Play. It is on the App Store. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L. That's Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, my keys for Game Six tonight in Denver for the Dallas Stars, and you know how I like to roll very, very simple keys. Keep it simple, stupid, because small details, it's the small things that win this time of year. My number one key, stay out of the box. I already alluded to it, but stay out of the box. Do not give Colorado a chance to find their rhythm offensively with the man advantage. They've done some damage at five on five. They've looked really good at five on five at times, but they really haven't made you pay all that much in this series in the grand scheme of things. They have done a lot of damage at five on four and with the extra attacker. Some of that is out of your control with it being late in games and you having a lead, but do not give them a chance to get into their rhythm offensively and get them back into the game with special teams. McCarr and McKinnon are already going to get enough looks because they are very, very good and talented at five on five. Don't give them freebies on the power play. Make them earn it tonight and make them earn a win to extend this to seven games. My number two key going with Jake Ottinger. Need him to bounce back. He's 11 and four all time following a loss in the postseason, he usually puts up a big a brick wall at this time of year, and he's been really, really sharp in games six and seven so far throughout this postseason. Need him to be great tonight. If they get a special performance out of him, you have to like the Stars' chances in Denver tonight. My final key for game six, the third key, just get back to the basics I think Dallas needs to, to get back where they're rolling four lines, making simple plays off the window, in out, just staying out of the middle of the ice, not turning the puck over in dangerous 
positions and dangerous places where Colorado can hurt you. Get back to basics, play sort of, and I don't want them to not be aggressive, but play sort of a very defensive-minded sort of game like they did in games three and four where they just kind of held on and they were opportunistic with their chances. But be aggressive in spots because Colorado is going to be extremely aggressive. We saw that in game five. They are going to send everybody and anybody to the puck to hold pucks in. Every defenseman is pinching. Use that to your advantage. Use their aggressiveness to your advantage. Get some more odd man opportunities and bury them. Try to give yourself a two-goal lead. If 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 they stay within one, that's where Colorado can be dangerous. I think if Dallas can push it to two, push it to three again, I think you can take the fight out of Colorado tonight. How much do they really, really want it? They've already had to play from behind for the majority of this series. They even had to do it in game five, even though they won, but they were playing from behind. That is a really, really tiring way to play. That is not a way to live. Can Dallas do it one more time tonight? And we'll see what Colorado is made out of once again. They're not going to go away quietly. That is for sure. But try to give yourself some cushion in Denver. Take the crowd out of it, which they've done a great job throughout the postseason and just kind of punching back. Even when when Colorado starts to gain some momentum, it seems like stars score that goal. They get that big hit and they can take some of the atmosphere out of a road building. And I'm, I'm looking forward to tonight in Denver. Uh, you, you know, Avs fans are, are, are going to be bumping. They got nothing to lose after being down 3-1 in the series. They lost Nishushkin. They lost Hayes for a game. Uh, they, they are truly the underdogs, and they, they have nothing to lose. So Dallas needs to, to buck up here tonight, close it out in six, come back to Dallas, have a few days off, and we get to talk about the Western Conference Final entering Monday. That's what we are hoping for. Should be a fun one tonight. Another late one, uh, probably about 9.15, 9.20 puck drop. So uh, be on the lookout for that. The nice thing is it is a weekend. So enjoy your weekend as always, Stars fans. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button. Locked on Stars on Twitter. Joey the Jet 19 as well. And we'll get you geared up, man. We'll get you geared up for tonight and the rest of the postseason, hopefully. All righty, that'll do it for a little Game 6 preview here on Locked on Stars. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple stuff. Pretty simple stuff for Dallas. Do some of the small things, get out of there with a victory. Let me know your predictions in the comment section below. I'll be back with a episode tomorrow morning, early Saturday morning with a, a post-game reaction. Hopefully we're talking about handshakes and hopefully we're talking about a series win, but it is never easy this time of year as we all know. Well, that'll do it for today's game six preview on Locked on Stars. Have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great night, hopefully. I know that is dependent on the outcome. Have a great weekend, and we will see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.